High frequency radio communication at high latitudes. During auroral displays, the precipitating electrons can enhance other layers of the ionosphere and have similar disrupting and blocking effects on radio communication. This occurs mostly on the night side of the polar regions of Earth, where the aurora is most intense and most frequent. For more information on solar activity, for an amateur radio operator's perspective is available at H T T P slash slash www.qrparci.org. I'll have to post that link. All right. Okay, I'm at 31 minutes now. Well, I guess, all right. So this was, um, this is from Noah. Okay. Geomagnetic storms. Uh, so, what could they gotta say? Ah, there we go. Oh, I turned off the music. All right. All right. You know what? I think I'm gonna um, read this at another time. I'm gonna take care of this. I'm gonna do this. I think I'm gonna do these at another time. All right. Um, all right. So this is. Um, this was an update, is supposed to be an update on the Schumann. Um, there we go. All right. So uh, I'm not talking about space weather here in this one. So this was the, the purpose of this uh, the part A when I started that. Um, just because my part B doesn't mean I'm, I'm not still trying to follow along with what I started in part A. Um, all right. So this is part B. Hold on, let me have my old friend here. Ah, there we go. So, this is part B, where I'm talking about, uh, this is the magnetics. All right, so we've gone from, essentially, in our narrative, in, in this, the, uh, uh, this session here, we, we've gone f in our narrative from um, Tomsk, where I took you through that website, the background of the electromagnetics from one to 30 megahertz, where we're talking about, where we're just talking about in that range and from the NOAA site. So, um, so we have a nice tight little idea of what we're talking about here with the background magnetics, electromagnetics. Um, and so now here we've, we've gone through NOAA's site, through their space satellite. I showed you just, this is an introduction, this is an introduction. To all this stuff. So I showed you that, the website of, of NOAA, the government site. So this here, spaceweatherlive.com, and this is a, a world view, essentially a worldwide view of the magnetics measured from different stations around the globe. So in our first video, I started out with the Tomsk, the one, one, one station in Tomsk in Russia. All right. So these are other stations around the globe who are also monitoring the uh, magnetics. And the electrics are more easy to get than the magnetics. The magnetics are mag uh, induction coils. And the induction coils take a lot to do, a lot to make. You've got to wind up, winding, 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 a gazillion times around a perm, per magnetically permeable alloy of whatever, mu metal, they call it. I don't even know what this stuff is made of, but magnetically permeable material to get the proper Schumann resonance uh, magnetics. It's a magnetic coil. So depending on the length of the coil, how many times it's winding, and blase, A, blase, A, blase, B, blase, um, you'll get different uh, types of signals that come in that you can measure. Uh, so this right here, uh, stack plot in North America, um, I probably won't have time to go into all of them. But you can see, all right, 
All right. So I'll read you. I will. I think what I'm going to do because I'm already at like 38 minutes. Um, my conceptual 30 minute, 40 minute. Now that I have this new memory stick, it's not giving me a time. It's the quickest, fastest one they had. They're not giving me a time limit on how long. It looks like I can do an hour without it kind of cutting it up, but I'll, I, don't, I don't know. So anyway, like I said, I'm still doing tests on my equipment. Um, this is a system, still a system test. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So the stack plot here. I'll read to you what it says. All right. It says this plot shows several magnometers that are located in North America. Okay, in North America, ranked according to their latitude when a geomagnetic disturbance starts the most northern magnetometers will respond and as the disturbance strengthens the lower magnetometers will respond as well hallelujah okay power's back on all right. so all right so i'm going to kind of introduce this. Uh, uh, so this is from different places in North America, and if you knew by the latitude, you know, so if you knew it's coming from the north, and so it's all working its way down. So if you knew where those were, I don't know where those are, but each one of those is a different place in North America. Uh, so then you have Hobart in Australia. And I know as a fact I have at least one viewer who lives in Australia. I have one viewer who lives in Australia who ha would be happy to see this information, I'm certain. Okay. So this is Hobart, what it says, oops, sorry. Hobart, Australia. This magnetogram gives you the values measured by the ground station of Hobart, Australia, Tasmania. If you are not local in Australia or New Zealand, please consult a magnometer near your local location for a more accurate representation of the current geomagnetic activity. Additional southern hemisphere magnetometer and X K, K index, there we go, K index plots can be found under the drop down buttons, credit Geoscience Australia All right. so that is Tesla, this is nano oh, jeez, try to knock you over All right. so on the side here, these are nano Teslas, up to 1,030 nano Teslas and I think that is where we get into a Pico I think the thousand, pretty sure the thousand nano is a pico. Anyway, all right. Um, and so that's your time down there. This is your relative strength. There was a pop around 19, oh, I don't know, 12, 1, 12 between 12 and 1 on UTC. Oh, the date, there it is, all right. So the 8th of, um, 28th of September, all right. All right, so here's the GOES, NOAA, we just saw that, GOES 16, all right. More, more magnetometers, all right. All right, so... Lixiel, that's to you. I'm not sure where Lixeli is. Okay. Uh, these are da data measurements from them. All right. Some of these I look at, I'm not sure what they're telling me. 
Karuna. All right, so this is the K index, the magnetic storm index in Karuna, and this was 1528, it looks like. All right, so these are up in the yellow range here. All right. Uh, the, oh, uh, Sweden. There we go. This is this is from Sweden. Swedish Observatory of Space Physics. All right. Q. All right. So Q. Q is our uh, quality magnetic bursts. All right. So you can see we had a peak there. Okay. What else we got? All right, so, all right. Um. All right. So there was another before the end of this. All right. So there was one more. This kind of helps lead me into another discussion for another. Uh, all right. So uh, there is. I'm going to leave the links for these. But there's a number of places you can go uh, to check locally, depending on where you are, to check locally for the mag. The magnetometer, ma magnetic waves, and the magnetic flux that's around us. Why is the magnetic flux important? Because that's what I am maintaining is causing the ringing in the ears due to magnetic induction. Okay, so this right here, um, and I have made a point of showing this elsewhere. Um, I'm going to show this again because there is actually this is from the Heart Math Institute, Heart Math Org, Heart Math Institute. It's HeartMath.org website. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a um, a video soon. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to do a video soon. Hello, there I am. All right, so I'm going to do a video soon. When I'm talking about the heartmath.org uh, website, where they monitor the the power, the resident power of the Schumann on the magnetic scale. Okay, so a lot of people focus on the amplitude, the, the, the spike. This is, I think, this is why it's really important for me to talk about the magnetics more than the amplitude, because the mag the amplitude comes in, hit it and quit it. Comes in, does its thing, in and out real quick. The, the the upright spikes, even though you have a band of a few hours there, it's like it's still kind of it, it's it's electric. So it comes in and it it like a shot, and then it starts bleeding off into the magnetics, and then what you're left with is the magnetics that travel around the globe. That's why it's important to talk about the magnetics and get a picture from around the globe of what's happening with the magnetics and not just at Tomsk in Russia, looking at the Schumann. Um, my guides told me, you know, instructed me that it was the time to do this particular video so that I can talk to people and explain to people the difference between what's happening locally and what's happening worldwide and understanding that the difference between the two and what what is, you know, the why the magnetics are just as if not more important than the momentary amplitude spikes, the white, you know, the white light. Uh, if you don't know what the electric portion is and what the magnetic portion does, then you, you a person spouting off about oh the magnetic, the the the, the spike. The white spike, the whiteout condition, uh, you don't know what makes it a significant thing. You don't know what makes it important to even have have mentioned as it being a significant thing. If you don't know why it's important, you can't say, oh, it's important. I mean, it's just basically that's a operating principle. Uh, if you don't know why it's important, then you don't know what is important. That's just my humble view on that. But, so... Um, so it's important to, to know the difference between the magnetics and the electrics 
and to know uh, what is what's what, and to also know why the magnetics are so important. And once again, the first most primary reason of why the magnetics are so important to understand and what's happening there is so that one has a clear understanding. It's important to know because you have a clear understanding of knowing what's what's happening, uh, I guess, around the world. You know, like the, the magnetics are affecting the, the, the they, they travel around the world in a way that's different from the electrics. The magnetics travel the globe, whereas the the electrics are local, local transport only. I think that's a, and they don't stick around long. All right, All right so I'm at 50, 40, I'm almost at 50 minutes right now. So, um, what I'm going to do is... Okay, so essentially, this just basically says view live data, although I have to say they haven't updated this since the 17th. So we have seen more more recent data than, than August 17th. I would just say this, all right. So it says on here, the GCMS magnetometer, Schumann Resonance's power, view live data from... Uh, GCI's Global Coherence Monitoring System, a worldwide network of magnetometers that collect a continuous stream of data from the Earth's magnetic field. All right, so this is from the magnetic field of the Earth, not the Schumann Resonance. I'm sorry. The Global Coherence Initiative is an international effort that seeks to help activate the heart of humanity and promote peace, harmony, and a shift in global consciousness. GCI conducts groundbreaking research on the interconnection between humanity and the Earth's magnetic fields and energy systems. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to stay in the frame. Okay. All right. So, um, oh. so I have shown this before, and I, I'm going to show it again. All right. You see this graph here. You can see, if you see go scrolling across, you can see the different stations where the the magnetic field strength of the Earth here, this one two hundred fourteen on August fourteenth, you had five hundred and fifty two point five way up here, and that was in Canada. That's Alberta, Canada. All right. So you see. Down here, there's different stations. One, G, GCI, O1 is California, O2 is Saudi Arabia, O3 is uh, Lithuania, O4 is Alberta, Canada, O5 is Northland, New Zealand, O6 is uh, Hua Hulu, uh, whatever, sorry for butchering the name, South Africa. All right. So you see these are all in here. All right. So these are magnetic the strength of all the magnetic uh, stations that they have in that area. All right, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but, um, all right, so this is, uh, all right, so I'll read to you what it says here. The Schumann Resonance's power graph summarizes the information presented in the spectrogram calendar and illustrates the dynamic changes occurring in the Schumann Resonance's region of the magnetic field. Power is the sum of the power in all frequencies detected by the sight magnometer from uh, 0 0.32 to 36 hertz and is calculated for every hour. A 24-hour moving average of this power data is plotted for each sight and updated hour except it not since the 17th, apparently. Uh, each monitoring site is represented by a separate colored line and can be toggled on or off by clicking the label for each site in the legend key. The time span of data displayed can be changed with the zoom control the upper left, the charted window within the horizontal slider and the range display controls under the time and date labels. All right, okay. 
I've done that before. I'm not going to do it here. All right. Okay. So, <clears throat> all right. So it's an hour, almost an hour here. Fifty-three. Right. It's the clinical hour. Um, all right. So. Thank you all for being here with the Schumann Resonance Harmonic Sisses. Um, I decapitated myself. Here we are. All right, so thank you all for being here with the Schumann Harmonics Resonances uh, Facebook channel on YouTube. Uh, hello. Where am I? There we go. All right, so um, thank you for being here. I appreciate everyone and your comments and uh, just giving me a lot of good, interesting information, ideas to work with, directions to move in, areas to research, fun things to that maybe I can do. You know, the video, when, since I've had interaction with a lot of the, um, the viewers, it's been a fun project making these videos uh, because they're they're geared toward people a lot of times, certain specific comments. Um, uh, and, you know, I think that's a, kind of a fun thing. It gives me a direction to move in that I think may help someone. I don't know. May or may not help someone. Um, so, uh, so this was, um, today, this was uh, a lesson on the... Uh, the the Schumann resonances related to more the magne mag magnetic portion of the program than the amplitude. Um, okay, so uh, it's been a long day for me. It's it's uh, almost one o'clock in the morning here where I'm at, and um, I've had a long day. And um, I ride a bike everywhere. And it can be difficult going up the hills in Providence, and um, you know there's there's a lot of stuff going on here. It's a wonderful time to be alive, and there's a lot of stuff happening, and and uh, you know I'm just really glad to be here at this time. All right, so um, all right, so that's uh, enough of the lesson today. Uh, it's enough of me today, right now, and um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, close this out. Thank you all for being here. Um, I appreciate everyone being here. Uh, just, I really appreciate the support of everyone. And uh, much love. And thank you all very much. Uh, you, your wonderful comments make, make doing this worthwhile. Um, and so without, without the love of people, this isn't, worth, this isn't worth it. For all of the trouble it's been to get all this up and running. So thank you all for being here. Thank you all for being here. You helped me learn about the Schumann Resonances. Have a great, wonderful day. Bye. Maestro, take us out. Thank you.